Hello, welcome to another video of the complete Angular course. In this video, I'll be talking about interactions with components using inputs and outputs. One of the major advantages of building applications using Angular is the ability to divide our application into tiny modules called components. But how can we control the behavior of the component from the outside? And how can we react to the changes made by the component? We need a way to insert and extract information from our components so we can interact with them. Take a look at this scenario. We have a component that displays some text. If we want to reuse the component, it will display the same thing and behave the same way. This is unwanted behavior. Whenever we want to reuse a component, we want to be able to control its behavior so that it behaves differently than other components of the same type, or simply to display a different message instead of the same thing over and over again. In Angular, we can give our components entry points to establish a connection with the outside. These entry points are known as inputs and outputs. Inputs are used to receive information from the outside, and outputs are used to release information from the inside. Let's start by doing some examples. Open your Angular project. Create a component using the ng-generate-component command. Upon completion of the command, expand the component folder and go to the component TypeScript file. To begin adding inputs to our components, we have to add input to our imports. Then declare an input receiver variable with the type of input it can receive. The purpose of the input receiver is to receive and store the value that is passed into the component. Lastly, add an input decorator as part of the variable declaration to indicate that a variable is used as the input receiver. That's all we have to do to add an input. So now, we have an entry point where we can pass a string into our component from the outside. It is a string because the type of our input receiver is a string. It can be anything, a boolean, a number, a class, and so on. To show how this works, go to the component HTML page and use interpolation to place the variable in the page. Now add the component to the app component HTML page so it will be rendered onto the screen. Go to the component TypeScript file and get the value of the selected property from the component decorator. Then go to the app component HTML page and add the component. Next, we will insert a string into the component. Go to the app component TypeScript file and declare a string variable and assign it some text. Go back to the app component HTML page and insert the variable in the component. To access inputs of a component, we use the square bracket syntax and provide the name of the input we want to access, which is the name we have given the input receiver. Then we specify what we want to insert. We want to insert our variable. So right now, our component should display king. Let's verify that. Save the project and start the local server. Open the browser and go to localhost 4200. As you can see, by adding inputs to our component, we can insert anything into our components and control the behavior from the outside. Now let's talk about outputs. Outputs are custom events that we can add to our component. Imagine a clinical setting. When you go into a clinic, you will first sign in and register your information. This is the input process. You're inputting your information so the clinic can compile the information and add you to the queue. Then you will sit and wait for your name to be called. When it is time for the clinic to call for the next patient to see the doctor, they will call a name and you will listen to see if your name is called. You will subscribe to the system. This is the purpose of outputs. When you add an output, you are adding a system where things from the outside of the component can subscribe and listen to whatever the component has to say. Then they can choose to react to it or not. Let's see how we can add outputs. Go back to VS Code. Go to the component TypeScript file and add output and event emitter to our imports. Then declare an output variable. The role of the variable is to store an event emitter object. 
This object will turn our output variable into an event node where things can subscribe to it and listen to our component. Inside the angle brackets is the type of information it can broadcast. Lastly, add the output decorator in the variable declaration to indicate that the variable is an output. So now we have an output that can broadcast a string value to the outside, but we're not done. We need to define when to trigger our event node to broadcast the information and what information we want to broadcast. Let's say we want to send a greeting message out using the name input we're taking in when we click on a button. So our when will be when we click on a button and our what will be the greeting message. Go to the greeting component HTML page. Add the button and attach a click event. Then assign a function for it to call. Go to the component TypeScript file and define the function. In the body of the function, we will specify what to broadcast. The event emitter object has a method called emit. It takes in an argument and that's the information you want to release to the public. Since our event emitter object can broadcast strings, we pass a string. If it were a boolean, we will pass a boolean, and if it were an object, we will pass an object and so on. The purpose of the emit method is to trigger our event node to broadcast the information. Now the output is complete. We can subscribe to it. Go back to the app component HTML page. To access outputs on a component, we use the parentheses and provide the name of the output we want to subscribe to. Then we assign a handler function to handle the event. Go to the app component TypeScript file and define the function. Right now, when we click on the button in the greeting component, it will trigger the output event and call this handler function. Let's verify that. Save the project and go to the browser. Click on the button. As you can see, we added a custom event to our component that we can handle. You may be curious to what happened to our greeting message that is supposed to broadcast. Since outputs are really events, when they are triggered, they return an event object that has information for the event. We can use that event object that is returned to us and pass it into the function that it is calling to get the broadcast information. Here's what I mean. Go back to VS Code. And then go to the app component HTML page. The custom output event will return an event object when it gets fired. So we can then pass that object into our function and get the message. However, we need to make the function accept that object. Go back to the app component TypeScript file and locate the function definition. Add a parameter to accept that event object as an argument. The event object is the message itself. When we use the emit method, it will make the event object take the form of the value that was passed into the method. Since we passed in a string, the event object becomes a string, so we can just get the message by getting the event object. Save the project and go to the browser. Click on the button. As you can see, we brought a value from inside the component out so we can use it outside of the component. Let's take a moment to recap what we have learned. We learned that we can add inputs and outputs to our components. We use inputs to insert values into our components and output to get values out from the component. We learn how to add inputs and outputs to our components. To add inputs, we need to add input to our imports and then add the input decorator to the input receiver variable. To add outputs, we need to add output and event emitter to our imports and then add the output decorator to our output variable. Then we have to initialize the output variable with an event emitter object. We learned that outputs are really events and that they can be triggered by calling the emit method. We learned that events returns an event object that contains information about the event. We can use the event object that's returned to us and get the value that was passed in the emit method. We learned that if we want to access an input, we can use the square bracket syntax and provide the input we want to access inside. Then we assign a value we want to insert. We also learned that if we want to access output events, we use the parentheses and provide the event we want to access. Then we assign a handle the function to handle the event. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to support the channel. If you have questions, leave a comment in the comment section below. Now I want you to do this exercise. Create a component called car. 
Inside the component, we'll have two inputs, one output and one button to purchase the car. We should be able to insert the price and brand of the car. When we click on the purchase button, it should send the price and brand information out from the component and then we want to display an alert with the price and brand information. Pause the video and take a few minutes to do this exercise. Here's the solution. Generate a car component using the ng generate component command. Expand the car component folder and go into the car component TypeScript file. Add input, output, and event emitter to our imports. This will allow us to add inputs and outputs to our component. Add the two inputs, one for the price and one for the brand. Then add the output. The type of information we want to release to the public will be an object with the price and brand information. Go to the car component HTML page and add the purchase button. Then attach a click event to it and assign a function for it to call. Go back to the car component TypeScript file and define the function. In the body of the function, we will call the emit method from the output event emitter object and pass in an object with the price and brand information. Now we need to add the component to the application so it will be rendered. Get the value from the selected property in the component decorator Go to the app component HTML page and add the component. Insert the price and brand using the square bracket syntax and providing the name of the inputs. Then subscribe to the output by using the parentheses and providing the name of the output. Assign a handle to function and pass the event object into the function. Go to the app component TypeScript file and define the function. Since we pass an object with the price and brand property in the emit method, the event object will also contain those properties. We can get the price by grabbing the event object and accessing the price property. And we can get the brand by grabbing the event object and accessing the brand property. Lastly, we will use the alert to print the information to the browser. Save the project and go to the browser. Click on the button. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.